Hey everyone, welcome back to A Level Lessons Online. Alright, I have a rather short video today actually for you guys. Okay, this is um physical geography, okay, covering part 26. Okay, wow. I just realized we're at part 26, how far we've come. Okay, yeah, we're gonna be looking at part 26 of our physical jog series. Um looking at these two concepts, okay, called river equilibrium and longitudinal profile. Alright, in the previous two parts, okay, or previous three or four parts, okay, we've gone through a bit on what channel morphology is, and we've covered in depth, okay, what meandering and braided rivers are. Okay, so now this part is to kind of like tie everything together, okay, to understand when is a river at an, at this stage of equilibrium, and what does it mean for a river to have a longitudinal profile. Alright, so let's jump right in, okay. Firstly, your river equilibrium, okay, the river equilibrium is actually reached, okay, it's a concept, okay, whereby it is reached when the river has achieved a balance of water flow and sediment transport. Okay, the river tends to reach a stage of equilibrium by the process of erosion and deposition. Okay, essentially what equilibrium means is that, like, the whole river is basically at, like, kind of like a standstill, okay, everything is equally balanced out, there is enough erosion, there is enough deposition at the same time to ensure that then the river can just basically run smoothly. Alright, so there should not be an overload of sediments in the river, yet there should be sufficient erosion and deposition that should be taking place. Okay, which means that any sort of erosion that occurs, okay, of course it will produce sediments, but these sediments should definitely be deposited somewhere and accumulated somewhere such that the river can still flow, um, the water can still flow very, very nicely in the river channel. Alright, so river efficiency will be able to aid in showing if the river is in a state of equilibrium. So we'll go through what river efficiency is first, and then we'll come back to this idea of equilibrium. Alright, so river efficiency is the caliber and the amount of sediment that a river can carry. Um, basically, it is measured by these two concepts of competence and capacity. Okay, so a river's capacity and a river's competence. Okay, a river's competence basically means it is the measure okay, of the largest rock particle that the river can transport. Okay, so for example, if you, you say that someone is competent, okay, it means that they're capable, they're able and um, in that sense, kind of like, um, they have that talent, okay, they are able to do a, a certain something well right so likewise competence okay, if a river is very competent it means that it can transport um um let's i mean in this case right the most admirable thing sort of per se would be um large um deposits right uh for example large sediments and coarse sediments okay so if it can do that it means that it's likely a very competent river okay such that the smaller sediments of course it will be able to get by it um very very easily Okay, so river of a high velocity, high energy will definitely have a higher competence level. Turbulent flow will also aid in competence as it allows larger particles to move with greater ease. Okay, so turbulent flow is, um, I, I know we've not covered it before. Okay, I'll go through this concept soon. Turbulent flow usually occurs at the upper cause. Okay, it's basically kind of like, think of it like a whirlwind. Okay, there's a lot of um, eddies, a lot of these bubbles and um, it is just basically where velocity is extremely high. Okay, when there's high velocity, of course, it's going to make it easier for your river um, sediments to be transported. So naturally, a river which has got a high level of velocity, a high level of discharge, hence a high level of energy, will definitely be very, very competent in being able to transport the smaller sediments all the way to the large sediments. Okay, then you look at capacity. So capacity looks at um, the amount. Okay, so how much is um, the capacity of a beaker, right? You look at the amount that a beaker can hold. So likewise, how much can a river hold? How much can a river transport? Okay, that's the river's capacity to transport something. So for example, at given a certain amount of discharge, a certain amount of water, okay, if the river is able to transport a lot of this, um, a lot of sediment, okay, yet still be... Um, um, able to flow as per normal, okay, that would be when we realize that the river is actually very, very efficient. Okay, so a high volume of discharge would definitely mean a higher river capacity, right? Um, because a higher volume of discharge would mean that there's more water to carry sediments, to transport, at the same time, the overall capacity of the river would definitely be much larger. Alright, so that's river efficiency. So river efficiency, okay, if you see that a river has got a high level of competence and keep, um and capacity, okay, likely chance is that the river will usually be at equilibrium, okay, because there's enough energy to do erosion, yet the river is competent and has enough capacity to ensure that all the sediments are being transported and deposited where necessary as well. Alright, that's when you know that the river has reached river equilibrium. Okay, then you look at longitudinal profile. So longitudinal profile basically characterizes the river's slope or gradient. Okay, as well as the spacing of the river channel caused by pools and riffles. Okay, pools and riffles we've learned before um, back in your meandering um, rivers video. Okay, go and check it out. So these can be classified further into your V and U shape profiles, right? So longitudinal profile, think of it as basically how the river looks like at a cross section. See, is it going to be a V shape like this 
or is it going to be like a U shape like this? Alright, so a V shape usually occurs at upper course, okay, whereby there is turbulent flow, and there is hence, okay, more of downcutting of the river. Okay, downcutting is an erosion process. Um, it basically cuts, okay, it cuts the river downwards, okay, which is why it forms this very very distinct V shape. Okay, so the water is like somewhere in here. Okay, on the other hand, at the lower cost, mid to lower cost, okay, definitely there'll be lower velocity as we've learned before. Hence, there'll be gradual erosion of the river banks and the river beds. Okay, so then, um, because of hydraulic action and abrasion, okay, your river banks, as well as your river bed, will be very nicely eroded such that it forms this kind of like a U-shaped river instead. Okay, it, there, is, there isn't really much down cutting, okay, instead it is more um, gradual, okay, because of the lower velocity and the lower energy. Oh, that's actually all, right? Yeah, so longitudinal profile is very clear. Okay, just understand that there are two types. There's your V-shape, there is your U-shape. Uh, once you understand these two different types of river profiles, okay, you'll be able to um, identify, okay, let's say if given a cross-section in your data response or case studies or data if you are um, if, you, if you feel the need to quote, okay, whether the river is of a V-shape or a U-shape profile. All right, so exam requirements, you just really need to simply understand the definitions of river equilibrium as well as your, what your longitudinal profile is, and apply them to the different types of rivers where applicable. Okay, usually, um, I would say that these concepts, okay, they would never come out by themselves. Okay, you always use it in conjunction when you're explaining your meandering or braided rivers. Okay, when you're explaining why upper course may have a certain shape, have a V-shape because of turbulent flow, or why the lower course may have a U-shape longitudinal profile. Okay, in river equilibrium, you're going to be looking um, more of as an evaluation, okay, to state that in the long run, every river needs to reach a river equilibrium. Um, as a result, okay, be it a meandering or braided river, they would both somehow reach that stage regardless of um, the type of river. Okay, something like this would be a justified evaluation. Okay, simply just need to explain why um, there's these two concepts that exist and that should be good enough for your um, this channel morphology area of your team one okay, on physical geography. Alright, so that's all I have for this video. Actually, quite a simple video and quite short. Okay, go ahead and leave any questions if you have them okay, in the comment section below. I will answer them. Um, if not, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot and it's free. So you can just hit that button for me and um, I would really, really appreciate it. Alright, so if not, I will see you guys in the next part. I think we should be moving on to maybe mass movements. Okay, we'll look at mass movements after this. Um, for physical jog at least, alright? So if not, I'll see you guys then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.